Hey everyone, my name is Tiara Smith and I'm the project manager of Beyond Type 2. Here at Beyond Type 2, our mission is to help people with type 2 diabetes by sharing practical resources and tips on how to live your best and healthiest life with the disease. Also, part of our mission is to take on and dismantle any stigma and stereotypes associated with type 2. And we do that by amplifying and uplifting the voices of those within our community. Today, I'll be chatting with Dex Gerald, who has been living with type 2 diabetes since 2013. Dex recently joined the Beyond Type 2 Leadership Council, and he's on to share his diagnosis story, as well as some tips on how you can be or start to become active today. Dex, it's great to have you on. Tell our audience about yourself. Hi, I'm Dex Gerald. I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm 34, and um, I was diagnosed in July of 2013. Uh, it was a strange time for me being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, uh, mainly because around that time I was really active CrossFit, working out probably for at least two hours a day, sometimes twice a day. Um, I was learning about different diets, the paleo diet, just trying that out. Um, it was working for me. I was losing weight, really getting fit. Um, so it was, yeah, it was really strange to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes around that time. What kinds of symptoms were you experiencing? And when you were diagnosed, were you surprised? Um, so um, some of the symptoms I was having uh, before I was diagnosed was uh, I had to use the bathroom a lot. Um, some nights I would wake up five, six times, use the bathroom. And the moment I finished using the bathroom, I would drink so much water. So I was always thirsty. I always felt dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I remember one night sitting in my apartment and um, so I was so into CrossFit. That's all I ever did was just watch CrossFit videos. And there was this guy, he's a type 1 diabetic, but he was talking about when he found out he was um, diabetic, he had some of the same symptoms of always being thirsty. I was in the bathroom, um, being irritable. I was running a restaurant at the time, and I was, I was so irritable. Um, and I felt, I don't know, I, I'm just a happy person. So it was kind of crazy to always be at like this kind of mood. Um, so yeah, after I watched that video, I decided that I would go get checked out and went to the doctors. They told I told them I think I had type two diabetes, uh, mostly because just the history of my family. Mm -hmm. A lot of my family members, especially the uh, older ones, have type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. So I figured that could be um, something um, that's wrong with well, that I had going on with my body at the time. So yeah, I went to the doctors test my blood sugar and I was at, I want to say 450 the day that I was tested. Wow. So yeah, the doctor said, sure enough, you have type two diabetes and um, send me home with a prescription to metformin and I believe two other medications, but I don't remember what they were. One was supposed to be for kidneys and um, I think maybe my liver, something around there. Um, turns out I didn't need those two. Um, so I never really used those at all. And, and were you, so you've been pretty active before your, before your diagnosis. Like, so from a, a diet perspective, did you have to change anything much? Yeah. So even though I was uh, eating a lot of like healthy food, basically just whole foods, I was eating too much of those whole foods. Um, there's times where I would buy, you know, those um, rotisserie chickens you can get from the grocery store mm -hmm. and I would eat the whole thing in one sitting. So um, it's definitely not something uh, I don't ever recommend. And I know that protein can also turn into excess glucose. So that was one of the things I had to learn about um, even with eating well. And yeah, I, just, I think my biggest problem was just that I was gluttonous with my food. I just ate everything as much as I could. And it probably goes back to being a kid where I'm the youngest of four. So if you didn't eat fast enough, you wouldn't get anything. So yeah, I, I remember just yeah. trying to get as much food as I can. And I kind of just went over into my adult life. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Like growing up, we were we definitely had that mindset that we had to clean our plates. So um, and if we didn't clean our plates, we weren't going to get that much next time dinner was served. So when, so pretty much portion, cutting your portion sizes was like the biggest thing that you had to do. And can you, can you talk to us about that family connection? How did your family react? And 
like do you, were you guys being supportive of each other as you were coming to into your own with your own diagnosis um so yeah the family aspect i remember when i was diagnosed the first thing i did was call my mom and i told her that uh, the doctor said i had type 2 diabetes and her response was i figured you would get it i just didn't think it would be this early and and that made me upset. I was mad because she never told me that this could be a possibility. But I think she maybe even hint at it. I remember being younger and she would have this test our blood sugar, um, even as teenagers and stuff like that. But it never really crossed my mind. I've been active my whole life. I mean, played football, basketball, wrestled, ran track and field. So those things never crossed my mind. Um, but I remember when I was a child, uh, my first grandmother, she – the first one that passed away, she passed away because of symptoms or side effects of um, unmanaged diabetes. And um, so that was something that came in my mind. And then blindness in my other grandmother, she, uh, she lived a lot longer and started to manage her diabetes a little bit better. But I remember her eyesight was starting to go. So that those scary thoughts started to pop in my mind. And I had like an auntie pass away from diabetes. So I think the first reaction when I heard that was the thoughts of my family and basically just like doom and gloom on, on having diabetes. Almost like it's like a death sentence. It's just like a slow death. Um, but for the most part, um, I've always had a pretty supportive matter what we did. Um, like I remember I told my mom I wanted to move to California to become an actor. And a lot of people say there's like an unrealistic goal, but my mom never gave me anything like that. Uh, she's my number one supporter. She's always excited to see me um, when I'm on commercials or TV or some kind of film. Um, but yeah, I mean, talking to her, she was my first support system with diabetes and how to manage it. Call her up and she'd tell me I could eat this much kind of starch or something like that to figure out how my diet will be. Um, yeah, so it's, um, I get pretty blessed to have her, who's managed her diabetes, I would say, almost perfectly. Um, she doesn't have any kind of side effects from that. And she's 64, I believe now. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome. Um, and then, I mean, my siblings, the like, same thing is we always have that mindset is you can do it as long as you put your mind to it. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, uh, I can't say... Yeah, there's never been a negative thing from from a family members when it comes to this. Uh, we just always put our head down, work hard, and figure things out. And so, yeah, it's been pretty well. So, that's an amazing support system to have. To have um, go, mom. Um, and I am very sorry to hear that you've had other family members who have um, suffered or passed from diabetes-related complications. It's something that a lot of people with type 2 are familiar with when um when we when we grow up learning about type 2 diabetes especially if you're if you come from um a, a family of color um there is that sense that we will get it when we get older and our immediate experiences are that we know people who have suffered from complications so when you, when we when we're diagnosed it feels like okay this is also going to happen to me um but it seems like your mom has been that person who has helped instill in you that it doesn't have to be that way as long as you learn how to take care of yourself and through her own behaviors exactly. she's been able to kind of to help you um, learn some of those habits too and so right now how do you currently manage um, type 2 diabetes are you still taking metformin do you take insulin and how does and what's your diet like now yeah i'm managing my diabetes now um with metformin and i take this supplement called um, curalin i believe which is i think it helps with the metformin uh the combination of both um and then diet and exercise wise uh exercise is pretty much been the same uh, one to two hours a day and when it comes to diet i've been tracking what i eat so I've been trying to figure out my macros, which is fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And I allow myself to have 115 grams of fat, 250 grams of carbohydrates, and 225 grams of protein. Um, and I found out that that range of um, macros uh, helps me manage my blood sugar in a way where I can still gain muscle um, when I'm exercising as well. So. Um. 
So yeah, let's actually get into your profession as a personal trainer and someone who's just interested in fitness. Tell us how you manage your, um, your diabetes with exercise. What are some of the, your favorite exercises to do to keep your glucose um, within range? Um, yeah, so when it comes to managing my glucose levels with exercising, uh, one of the things, if I am high before, before I start the workout, then something slow, like a slow jog for 15 or a hop on the bike or a row machine, and I've learned that through slow exercise that I can lower my blood sugar pretty fast um, if I do it that way. Other workouts, spring workouts, that usually makes me spike like instantly. So uh, I have to be careful when I start my workout. If I know my workout is going to be something like a sprint or in CrossFit, we can do a five-minute workout and still work for skill and ever. But the five-minute workout, if I go as fast as possible, there's been times where I would check my blood sugar levels afterwards, and I probably started off at 200, and I was over 300 by the end of that workout. It was just five minutes and just constant work. So I always need to make sure first where my uh, blood sugar levels are before I work out, and then depending on that, then I can design my workout off, design my workout off of what I see on the um, the meter. So yeah, usually that's uh, the best way. And then when I do spike based sprinting kind of workout, a fast paced workout, it usually comes down pretty quick. It's just that instant spike where your body thinks it needs to actually do close to get through. Very true. Very true. And what do you, and like, so when your, when your glucose is, is higher, do you have something readily available just to prepare for that drop post-workout? Like, do you ever get low blood sugars? And if so, like how low does your blood sugar sometimes drop after exercise and how do you treat it? Um, so I've been lucky enough to not have anything low. I think the lowest I've ever seen my blood sugar after a workout was probably around 115. Um, I do know some uh, type 1 diabetics who do CrossFit as well. And when they drop, they usually have like glucose tablets or something around there. Um, I love them. A lot of them are lucky enough to have like a Dexcom or something so they can check their uh, blood sugar levels around that time. So yeah, um, a lot of people usually after a workout drink a protein shake anyway. So that protein shake usually, depending on what brands you have, um, can have some sugar in there to help you um, bounce back up. I know there's a lot of new products coming out that's protein and carbohydrates that I've seen people take as well. So just mix that up, drink that, they get the protein and it's usually around like, I want to say 20 to 40 grams of carbohydrates as well that help people bounce back from that. But yeah, for myself, I've never, I've never dropped low at all. Um, I think the closest I've came was around 90, I think, now that I think about it. And that's still pretty safe level. So yeah, but yeah, that's how my friends manage theirs if they drop too low. I, because you're a personal trainer, first, how did you get into personal training and how did you know that that profession was for you? But when you meet with new clients and you tell them that you have type two diabetes, what is their reaction? Are they surprised? Um, so I got into personal training through CrossFit. Um, truthfully, I uh, wanted to figure out how to reduce my cost of CrossFit. Usually memberships are like 200 bucks. So um, I loved it so much that I'm going to it. I got my certification and started coaching so I could uh, work out for free. But during during coaching is that um, something I've always had a passion for was helping people um, I mean growing up I always volunteered and everything like that and um, so yeah I realized that like I'm helping people lose weight and live longer lives and that brought so much joy to me um, that I figured I'd take it to the next level and start doing this full time and started off just teaching group classes CrossFit classes and then when I felt confident enough in my ability to teach um, movements and give information, that's when I started going into personal training. And right now, um, before all of this happened, I had about nine clients, which was awesome for me. Um, and I was just teaching them. They all had different reasons um, 
some of my clients were pre-diabetic um and then other ones just it's la people want to look good so um but yeah usually um the first conversation i have with my clients is i usually let them know that i have type 2 diabetes um or usually i just say diabetes and then they get confused because the stereotype of diabetes is people who don't exercise eat really bad um uh and they have examples of like relatives and stuff like that that they bring up um some of them who do know the different types of diabetes usually i if i'm type one and then i let them know i'm type two which just confuses them even more and then i let them uh I just i just tell them a lot of, um genetics is a factor um and why i have my type 2 diabetes um and then other times it's not that a person is lazy or eating bad it's just habits that might have grown they've grown up with um with their diet and how they see it um sometimes people don't have access to gyms or other areas where you can work out and they have no idea that they can do other things to be fit um, so I don't, I don't ever think it's, I let them know that it's never like definite that it's a person's fault that they develop type two diabetes. There's other factors that go into that, not just, oh, they didn't do this their whole life. Um, they didn't work out or like seeing them eating McDonald's all the time. It's just habits that we learn through life and things happen because of that over time. And, um, um yeah, if you do get diagnosed with type two diabetes and there's just basically you just have to learn some new habits to help maintain that yeah yeah i mean and you're totally right like and i think that's like where where the shaming kind of needs to be addressed right because it's always the the fault of the person with type 2 um but it's like you said it's these are learned behaviors that go un, unaddressed for for years um kind of like what we talked about earlier about like if you know we have to clean how how we have to clean our plates when we're little like that kind of feeds into our actions as we grow up like our relationship with food um is dependent on our on our environment the people who, who we grow up with the people who we interact with on a daily basis but also if you're someone that lives in an environment where exercise doesn't feel you know something that you can do it or incorporate into your life it's going to be hard to maintain an active lifestyle so, exactly. and you know, we all, you know, we have a lot of people within the Beyonce yeah. community who want to know, like, what are some ways they can get active right now? It's a, it's a little bit tougher, I imagine, right now for some because, because we're, we're in the house, and we're in the middle of a pandemic, so there's a lot of stress right now to be, you know, active and keep our glucose in check. Um, so, what are some ways who, who are typically sedentary? How can they be active within their um, within their own lives today? So um, I think I've been really so one way to start to become active um, if you haven't been in a while or in your entire life um, is just to start off small. You don't have to start off with lifting weights or going on long jogs or anything like that. I think one of the biggest things is just to start off small with a 15 minute walk um, a day or every other day, whatever you can get in. That 15 minute walk will put you in the mindset of exercise. And then once you start to get comfortable with that 15 minute walk, maybe add a five minute jog to it. So now you're jogging for five minutes and then walking for 10 minutes. And then increase that from there. So that jog becomes from five to 10, from 10 to 15. And then from there, um, you probably have the habit of now this is exercise, this is maintainable. Now you can start to reach out to other things, um, maybe start incorporating strength training with that walk or that run, something like that. But it always starts small and then try to build up upon that. Never, you don't have to jump into something crazy. You don't have to do CrossFit like right from the start. Um, once you become comfortable with exercise, then you can start venturing off into the other things. But a 15 minute walk can bring your blood sugar down just as well as a 15 minute walk or jog as long as you um do it consistently well that's really great for our audience to know that they don't have to start with crossfit right away um so folks if you're trying to figure out how you can start working out you can just go for a walk over for a jog 
Um, but if you also want to do CrossFit, that's also cool too. I'm pretty sure Des can teach you how to get more into that. Um, and can you also touch a little bit about weightlifting and women? Because that's something that's just not necessarily diabetes related, but just health and fitness related in general, that there are women who won't lift weights because they're afraid of walking up, but it's still great exercise. So can you talk more about that? And also, um, can you touch on some ways to, to start strength training at home? Um, yeah. So women in weightlifting, uh, this question, um, I get a lot. I, I, I hate hearing, oh, I don't want to get bulky. I just want to get toned. I mean, what is toned? Um, so one thing, first of all, is um, women do have problems with um, their bone structure later in life. And lifting weights does help prevent that, osteoporosis. So that's one reason why women should weight lift. Another thing is um, I get clients who say, I don't want to look like these CrossFit women who are like big and bulky. And I want to tell them from the start that you would never look like that because these women put in three to four hours of work. They're eating four to 5,000 calories a day to get that big. It's because men and women are made up differently, testosterone, um, it's almost impossible for a woman to get bulky. Now, some people do have like genetics where they might get some shoulders or something like that, but it's your body. And if you want to be a stronger person later in life, then this is just something you have to do. Um, I, uh, I was lucky enough to have my first job with my mom at a nursing home and I seen firsthand on what that looks like when you don't exercise um, later in life. Um, especially with the women, a lot were in wheelchairs and the ones who were, um, were still exercising. And they had a little group class that they did a lot of little movements, usually kind of dancing and stuff like that to get the people moving. But yeah, um, weightlifting for women is preventive health. Uh, something if you want to live a long healthy life and you want to be able to move around and play with your grandchildren or wherever it is and travel whatever it is that you want to do weightlifting is super important um when it comes to strength work at home uh there's also there's a lot of things that uh you can use to do some strength work with i remember uh the first time i got into fitness pretty much was like when i was five years old and i wanted to carry the milk jugs in from my mom's car. So that's one thing is milk jugs or water jugs. You can fill that up. Um, you can do bicep curls with that, shrugs, um, bent over rolls, uh, a lot of different things you can do with something with handles and water. Um, and then just the basics with your body weight, different variations of push ups, either from your knees or you can go elevate it. So you can go to the corner of your couch and do it from there. It's a little bit easier the higher up you are with your hands. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of things you can do from home to develop strength, even if it's just um, doing squats. Um, and they only have to be full squats. Go as deep as you can, come back up, do as many as you can, and then rest a minute or so and repeat it. Um, and those things will help the starting part of um, your strength work. A lot of times people who... <laughs> want to lift weights right away and you should have better control of your body first before you go into actual strength training that way you can help prevent injuries and you kind of build muscle a lot faster that way yeah like form is super important um i i know i've i go to the gym here when i would when things were open and you know one thing the trainers will always tell new members is to focus on your form first don't try to like put on like four 45 plates and squat and, you know, try to build muscle that way. Like it's okay to start small and then use your own body weight with a little bit of added weight. But as long as your form is good, that's actually the best way to progress because you want to prevent injury and you don't want to set yourself back. Exactly. Big time. So uh, Dex, can you please tell our audience where they can get in touch with you? And also, like, what are some what are some encouraging words of empowerment? You've been posting a lot of videos on your Instagram page, um, working out and just like being super consistent with that. Um, so, what are some empowering words that you have for our audience and and how they can continue to lead an uh, lead an acting an, an active lifestyle? 
Um, so you can reach me at on my Instagram page at Dex Geralds, or uh, you can email me at DexFit38 at gmail.com. Um, when it comes to um, just staying active, especially during this time period, is we do, um, at least some of us anyway, like myself, I have a little bit extra time to figure out some things at home that I enjoy doing. Um, I know myself is that I don't like to work out at home. I don't like to do work at home. It's just too comfortable for me here to uh, do that and a lot of distractions. So I've been um, just trying to find spots where I'm allowed to go and do some workouts there. Um, and then when, I'm, when I am at home and have to work out, I, uh, I kind of just stick with the activities that I know I like that I could do inside. And that helps me get through that. Um, I won't pick something necessarily super hard or tougher or I'm going to end up. I remember, um, quick side story, trying to do, uh, was it like P90X or Insanity? And five minutes in the video, I'm sitting on the couch just watching them work out. So uh, I did those not that I don't like that yeah. kind of exercises. Yeah. <laughs> like I think, I think everybody at some point did like, yeah. those exercises or those kind of workout videos. Yeah. And like I know some people were worked out well for it but for myself uh I just can't I can't yeah it work out at home like that so it has to be something that motivates me to move yeah yeah I, and then um I think uh one missed opportunity people miss out on uh if you do have kids and you're at home with them now play with them they have so much energy just run and then the good thing is is they're gonna be tired after you get them playing and you're probably gonna be done too tired so then you yeah. guys can just relax together and be quiet so that's yeah. awesome advice. And also, like, if you have little kids and if you can lift them, you can use them as weights, too. Um, exactly. That's what my uncles did with me when I was little. They would, like, use me as, like, a shoulder press. Um, <laughs> it was fun for me because I'm like, woo. Um, but that's, that's another great way to exercise. Definitely get your kids involved. Um, depending on where you are, there are, you know, restrictions on what parts you can go to. But if you, if you have, like, a yard, if you just, like, have – or you just like, even just like a sidewalk or just a block, you can get really great exercise doing exactly. that. Um, and, you know, there is, should be no pressure to do something like P90X or Insanity at this time. You know, yeah, I would say try it. Yeah, yeah, try it. Yeah, unless you want to try it, that's cool. Um, I, I did, and I liked it back then, when, especially when I was learning how to, how to use weights. Um, but definitely finding something that you enjoy is such a big part of remaining consistent. Um, I know for me personally, uh, the gym is closed and that's like my major support system, but they do post a lot of like home workout videos to keep the community connected. Um, and when I don't feel like doing any kind of strength workouts, I honestly just turn on YouTube on my TV and I dance to like BTS and Beyonce choreos. So, <laughs> and I do that for 30 minutes and my blood sugar comes down um, and I feel really good. I feel, you know, very invigorated, but also like one thing I've, I've been able to really stick to these last couple of months is walking, just taking a mile walk with my dog. Um, and also, yeah, if you have a dog, this is a great time to get exercise with you yeah. too. Perfect. Um, so we take long walks and I just listen to music, listen to podcasts. I dance while I walk too. So just anything to feel good um, and not necessarily make exercise feel like a chore. Exactly. Yeah, I, I actually been going on a lot more walks too. Um, I guess because you just inside all day, it's nice to get out and yeah. enjoy things. I, I found this great um, soccer field place near me that I never realized was near me until like about two weeks ago and I was just going on a walk. And lucky enough, it was never closed. There's always a police officer there and super nice facility where I can get workouts in. And so I think most of my videos now have been coming from, from that place. Like yeah. it's just been outside and walking. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, there's, there's so many ways to be creative with being active. Um, no gym needed and actually and no gym equipment needed to like, you are enough um which is something that you know we definitely want our audience to be mindful of that they can do pretty much anything to be active so dex thank you so much for coming 
on with me and chatting about fitness and diabetes. Um, we love your voice within the community. Please, everyone within the Beyonce 2 community, go check Dex out. He really does post amazing content. You will learn something. We've even posted something from him and he was using like a backpack to do bicep curls, which is something I never ever thought I could do. Um, so I can, you know, use ordinary objects around the house to just get in a really good workout. But Dex offered some awesome gems here on how you can get active today. And it doesn't have to be like a chore or something that you have to do. It should be something that you want to do and something that's going to make you feel good inside. So Dex, do you have any last words? Um, um, I guess the, there was one thing that um, I wanted to talk about when it comes to the numbers on the scale or your numbers on your glucose meter. Mm -hmm. um, and one way that I found out that helped me um, during the beginning stages of my type 2 diabetes was first I needed to identify the type of person I wanted to be living with type 2 diabetes and once I realized or identified that I wanted to be the type of person who can manage their type 2 diabetes that was my thing that's my identity and then I had to figure out what the process would be to do that um, and then learning that diet and exercise is key to um, being able to manage your blood sugar or even just dropping pounds on the scale. And that should be the focus of it is the process of that. Mm -hmm. And then after figuring out the process, then I uh, started to focus on the outcome. And it was the outcome where it, where I wanted it to be was the numbers dropping on the scale was my food or was my blood sugar being managed to at normal levels. Yeah. And if it was, then I was doing the right thing. And if it wasn't, I go back and look at the process and figure out what I had to change to do that. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, I think the most important part is first identify who you want to be, then figure out the process mm -hmm. and then you have your outcome. Oh, that is, that is such great advice. I love that. Um, diabetes is definitely tied to our identities in some way. We, we are, of course, not our entire disease, but you know, it does impact our life and can have long-term effects on our lives um so figuring out like what how you want diabetes to fit in your life is a great way to start to visualize action steps that you can take and outcomes that you can expect so exactly. i love that that's a that's a really great note to end on um dex again thank you so much for coming no on here. thanks for having me we you know mm -hmm. we love you over here um and we definitely want to have you on again to talk more about fitness and to show our audience some moves that they can do uh, while we're still sheltering in place. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let me know. Well, that's it for our conversation today. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, the chat I had with Dex today and we're able to take home some fitness tips that you can start incorporating into your lives. For more information on Dex, check him out on Instagram at Dex Gerald. And for more information on Beyond Type 2, be sure to visit our website at beyondtype2.org. We do have information on topics from mental health to diet to exercise and other personal stories from people who are living with type 2 diabetes. Our community is for anyone impacted by type 2. And remember, you are not alone.